what up again tech fam in this video I want to do about 10 questions you might get in a help desk or desk side support entry-level IT interview stay tuned let me do my thing. Let me, let me You know, in this video, I wanted to give about, you know, I don't know, 10 questions that you might run across that you might get asked while you in an interview for an entry level tech job like desk side support or um, help desk, um, something like that. So um, I, I just wrote down 10 random questions that I could think of and uh, I'm all, you know, pose the question and tell you how I would answer the question if I was the one in the interview. So without further ado, question number one. Question number one is the classic, tell me about yourself. This is probably the first question that you'll get asked in any interview, uh, really. Um, it's kind of like a standard first question that everybody asks. I run across it every time I take an interview, they ask it. So. Tell me about yourself. And what I like to do is I try to keep whatever I'm describing about myself focused on whatever the job is that I'm applying for. So if I'm applying for um, help desk or um, desktop or network job, whatever the job may be, I try to focus on things that I've done, things that interest me about myself in those areas. So for a help desk, I might be, be, I might start off saying how I got into or how I got interested into technology um, and then progress from there, how my interest changed, what I did to cultivate uh, my knowledge in the area as far as going to school, taking classes, certifications, any uh, work I've done in the field, jobs I've had. Um, and try to just keep keep it short, concise, and uh, mostly focused on something pertaining to the job you're applying for. You do that, you should be able to uh, get through that question pretty easy. Okay, the next question, question number two, is going to be, what is an IP address? So, this is a fairly standard question, and basically... Uh, the way I would answer it is, is an IP address is kind of like the location of a device on the network. So every device on a network has an address, if you will. That's why they call it an IP address. You can think of it like your, your street, your block is a network and every house on that block has an address. And so the IP address is equivalent to the home address. So if the mailman is trying to send a package, uh, some data, which would be a piece of mail to a certain uh, apartment, Joe's house, it needs to know Joe's address or how to get the mail to Joe's house. And he uses an address to do that. And the IP address is the equivalent of the home address. It shows the network where to send the data. Um, the next question, question number three. Um, this is a standard um, help desk question. They Probably every help desk job will ask it. If you get a trouble ticket or a work order for um, a situation, the user says their monitor won't come on. And you, this is a fairly common work order too. It happens all the time. Um, the user says, I can't see anything. My screen is blank. So what do you do in a situation like that? And the way I would answer it is, uh, the first thing I would do is, I know it sounds ridiculous or simple, but check the power. So press the power button. The power button, um, if you don't get any reaction from pressing the power button, then you check the power source, which would be the cable. Is it plugged all the way into the back of the um, monitor? If that is 
the case, then you go to the power source. Where is it plugged into? A wall or a power strip? Is the power strip on? Is it plugged in? Are there other things in the power strip that are getting power, but this monitor is not? So that would be the first three steps to check out this monitor. If you get through all of that and still nothing, um, and the monitor doesn't have power, the monitor's probably died and it needs to be replaced. So the next step would be to get a, a known working monitor and plug it in and see, plug it into the computer and see if it comes on. All right, so uh, we'll go to the next question. Uh, I think this will be the fourth one. Um, how do you find out what the IP address is or the gateway information for a particular computer or the workstation that you're sitting at? How do you find out what the IP address is? And this is a fairly common question too. Um, there's several ways to do this, but the most common standard answer would probably be through the command line. So what you would do on a Windows computer is press the Windows key, type CMD, open a command line prompt, type in IP config, and that will give you the IP address of the computer. If you need the gateway information and uh, MAC address, you type in IP config space backslash all, and it'll give you all of the DNS information uh, for that computer. Now, you know, new day and age, internet day and age, if you want to find out what the IP address of your computer is, you can simply type in Google, what's my IP address, and it'll give you your IP address just like that. So, I mean, like I said, there's other ways to do it. But the most standard way is the one that I said um, at first. So, Okay, moving on. Next question is going to be, um, I believe this will be question five. Um, what is the difference between a domain and a work group? Um, so if you get asked this question, the most standard answer probably would be um, a work group is a collection of computers on a network that are connected together, basically. A domain is essentially the same thing as a work group. The difference is that computers on a work group all of their configuration and permissions are set on each computer, on each workstation itself. And whereas in a domain, um, there is a centralized location for um, uh, the configurations and the um, permissions set on all of the computers that are connected in the work group so that um, there's one set of rules for all the computers that are connected in this network centrally located as opposed to each computer having its own rules and permissions set okay so next question what is the most likely problem if you print a document or a user prints a document and it just spitting out letters and symbols it looks like gibberish there's no words or anything or pictures it's just lines and lines of gibberish what is the most likely problem going on there? And the answer to this is most likely it is a driver issue. Usually when you have the either wrong driver or a severely out of date driver, when you send a print job to a printer, it'll start printing out all kinds of weird letters and numbers and you might get some of the documents you're trying to print and then there'll be letters and numbers and symbols you know scattered throughout so usually the first thing to do is to um if if this printer had been printing normally and then all of a sudden started doing this it's probably because the driver is out of date and usually because some windows component updated and then it needed and then so it changed the compatibility with that driver so the driver needs to be updated as well and you just update the the driver for that print queue and that should fix the problem uh, another way this can happen is if it is the wrong driver altogether um so say you just installed a printer and you installed the driver and you did a test print and it came out all gibberish. that that's probably the wrong driver you installed and you need to get the correct driver and install it for that printer 
All right, so we're going on to the next question. And uh, this will be uh, seven, I guess. And that is, what is Active Directory? So Active Directory is a, um, it is a part of Windows Server. And what it does is it creates um, a, a, a centralized set of rules for all of the computers operating in the domain. So, okay, and we're going on to question number eight. Question number eight, I'm sure everyone has seen this before if you've done any work in the um, IT area or you've used computers um, extensively in your own personal life. You've seen this and that is BSOD. What is BSOD? So BSOD stands for blue screen of death. That's where the BSOD comes from. And it happens from time to time. What is it? So when they ask you that question, you, you can say, yes, that is the blue screen of death. What usually cause the, causes that is a hardware malfunction. So a piece of hardware on the computer system has either malfunction or is conflicting with a piece of software on the computer. Now this can happen two ways. Um, either a piece of hardware can fail causing a conflict or you can install a new piece of software that conflicts with a corresponding piece of hardware. So say like you, uh, you install a corrupted driver for your video card and uh, it conflicts with the, the video card firmware and boom, you get a crash and it, your computer keeps crashing. And if you go and remove the video card and start, restart the computer, you see that um, you don't get a crash, um, then you know the conflict was between that driver and that piece of hardware. So usually it's a piece of hardware, but however, it can also be a piece of software. And most commonly, it is a conflict between software and hardware. All right, next question. Um, this will be question nine, I believe. And that is gonna be, what is DHCP? This is a pretty common question. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Um, and basically what DHCP does is it issues all of the um, IP address and gateway information to all of the workstations on a network. So all of the devices on a network get an IP address, a gateway address, uh, MAC address information is displayed and uh, uh, DNS information. And DHCP issues these to all of the um, devices on the network. And number 10, this will be 10, the last one. And this is a pretty common question too. It'll go something like, describe a time when you had to deal with an angry customer. So first and foremost, uh, help desk, desk side support, anytime you um, have to deal with another person as it relates to an IT issue, it's basically customer service. They are your customer, that user is your customer, and you are providing customer service when you come to address whatever issue they have with their PC. So that being the case, companies, businesses, hiring managers, they want to know that you can communicate with people, you can resolve conflict, and uh, you know, you're know you not gonna blow up and it, you know start punching people. <laughs> yeah. So um, they ask questions like this just to gauge uh, where you are mentally as far as it goes to um, uh, conflict resolution. So the, you know, the best way to answer this question is to be honest. I'm sure most people are reasonable um, in their addressing conflict and just talk about a time where you may have interacted with a person that was upset for whatever reason. Maybe they weren't upset with you, but with someone else and it, they were visibly, you know, um, having an issue and 
uh, how you handle the issue without making it worse. How you, the way you speak to them, how you listen to the complaint that they had, how you assured them that you would address their issue and uh, fix whatever problem was going on. And that is the best way to answer those kinds of questions. All right, so that was number 10. I hope uh, you all find you know some of these questions and, and answers useful and you can use the tips that I give you to kind of like tailor your own way of answering these questions uh, in you know that best fits your personality and your style so with that I will bring this video to an end um, like the uh, video subscribe to the channel if you like this content if you um, find it useful uh, please support the channel and um, thank you for coming through and chopping it up with your boy so until next video later